The introduction of multi-body modeling was one of the biggest enhancements to Creo Parametric 7.0. In a previous video, I showed some of the basics of multi-body modeling. In this video, we'll continue the exploration. Here I have a part, and I used a single sketch in order to create five different extrudes, and all those extrudes are their own individual bodies. Let me show you some of the effects of creating additional features. Let's say I want to create a hole, and I'm going to create a hole in such a way that it is going to potentially intersect multiple bodies. Let's place it on this surface over here. Let me change to my offset references collector. I'm going to say that I'm going to dimension from this surface here. Let's hold down the control key and select this other surface over there. Uh, let's see some of the different dimensions that we have on here. Let's try changing this offset dimension to 0.5. And this one should be a value of 6. Just trying to put it in the middle of a bunch of different features. And we have our depth drag handle. Let me right click on this and change this to through all. If I go to the body options tab, you'll notice that for some reason right now it just has selected body 5. It's only going through the part that it was initially placed on, even though I have a through all depth. I can change this to all, and in this way the hole would affect all the other individual bodies. Here you can see that we've got hole 1 in there. Body 2 isn't intersected, so it doesn't have it. So that's how you can control the extent of other different engineering features like holes. But other ones in here do not support having multiple bodies. So for example, let's say that I go to create a round. I will select an edge over here. Here we have the round tool from the mini toolbar. And I'll drag this out. Let's change the dimension to make it big enough for you to see. There we have our radius on here. But there's nothing in here that allows you to control which bodies it is going to affect. A round is only going to affect the body on which it is placed can't have multi-bodies involved in that. So that applies to rounds and chamfers. Next, let's take a look at what's called removing a body. I have body four over here. If I click on it from the mini toolbar, I can choose to hide it if I don't want to see it. Let's bring it back for a moment. You also have options to set it as construction so that it won't be contributing to your mass properties. Also, you could use it to filter it out of a bill of materials. But there is another option in here. Actually, before we talk about that one, uh, you also have the ability to delete the body. If I right click on it. Uh, sometimes though, you don't have the ability to delete because there's geometry and features that are contributing to it. So instead of deleting, you can remove the body and that will consume it. So when I choose to remove body, we're going to get a dashboard here for a remove body feature. You'll notice that shows what it's going to remove from here. From the references tab, you can choose additional bodies to remove, but I'm going to click the check mark in order to take it out of here. And now we have that remove body feature, and body four no longer appears in the list. Let's take a look at some of the model tree options that you have now. If I go to the settings drop down, I can choose tree filters. And right now we have this new body tab for features types. And consumed bodies are not displayed in the model tree. Let's hit the check mark and then click the OK button. And so now we do see body four. And one thing to note is that these different bodies have different symbols based on their various different types. Sometimes though they look pretty close to each other, but you know, other times it's just really hard to tell. So for example, if I select say body three over here, right click and then set as construction, you'll see that again, it has a slightly different symbol. Let me go to my magnifier. So there we have a construction body and there we have a consumed body and then we have our active body. Let's turn off the magnifier and then I'm going to go back to body three over here and unset as construction so it becomes a regular body instead. In addition to displaying consumed features in the model tree, you have the ability to display additional columns of information. And actually before I do that, let's 
take one of our bodies and convert it to sheet metal. And to do that, first it'll help me if I hide some of these other different bodies in here. Okay, so this first body I'm going to convert to sheet metal. Let's go to body, right click, and then convert to sheet metal. From the references tab, we need to select the driving surface. And for the thickness, right now it's using a thickness of one, which is kind of ridiculous for sheet metal, but let's just go with it. And then bring the other bodies back. Display, display, display. And the interesting thing is for some reason it brought back my feature number and feature ID columns. Now let's display some of the other different columns that we have. So I'll go to, and actually I think this is the tools drop down, not the settings drop down, as I mentioned a moment ago. Let's go to tree columns and get rid of some of the columns that are displayed in here. Under the info type, we now have some additional columns that we can add in here related to body. So we could choose contributing contributed body and also body category to be displayed in here. Let's click the OK button. And so now I can see that we have information here. So for example, here in body one, these are the different features that contribute to it. But again, we can see for the different extrudes and the different sections which bodies they contribute to. And so, for example, this hole actually affects four different bodies in here. So that's why it lists multiple different bodies. For body category, there are four different types of body categories. You have the basic solid, which represents bodies two, three, and five. And then we have over here sheet metal listed as well. Let me go back to my tree filters. Interestingly, consume bodies went away. There we have body four brought back in here. So there we have our sheet metal, our basic body. The other two different kinds of body categories that you have are lattice for additive manufacturing and generated for bodies that are created as a result of generative design. So there you have the additional information that you can display inside of here. Now I created a remove body feature and now this is showing up as a consumed body. If I go back to the remove body feature and then right click on it and choose delete and then get rid of that remove body feature, now this is no longer a consumed body. The symbol changed in the bodies folder to indicate it is the same kind of basic solid as the other ones. Next up, let's take a look at three new config.pro options related to multibody. So I'll go to File Options Configuration Editor. Let's click the Find button. The first one I'm going to search on is under a keyword Boolean and hit the Enter key. There's this option Boolean Default Operation. And the default value is model type. If I go to the drop down list, you can see that there are four other options for this config.pro option. The default for Boolean operations can be add bodies, merge, cut, or intersect. But the default value is model type, which means that the actual default Boolean operation will depend on whether you have a part or an assembly. And if you take a look at the description in here, and then I'll go back to the drop down. If you have an assembly and you're creating a Boolean operation, the default operation that it's going to choose is going to be a merge. If you have a part, the default Boolean operation is going to be to add bodies, but you can also cut or intersect. And again, this is just the default operation when you are performing a Boolean operation. When you're performing a Boolean operation, you can change within the tool what kind of operation that you're doing. So for example, if I choose, hey, let's select body five over here, and then I select that I want to do a body merge. While I'm inside of here, I can change this to an intersect, to a subtract, whatever, uh, for Boolean operations. Uh, same thing in the, let's activate one of these other bodies over here. 
Oh, actually, let's go to the Models tab. Here's where I have my Boolean Operations command. Again, you can change what is going to be your default, what kind of operation that you are performing when you are inside of Boolean Operations. The next new config.pro option, let's go to File, Options, Configuration Editor. This time I'm going to do a find on a keyword. Let's use multi. There is an option, enable multi-material body. The default value is yes. In other words, each body can have its own individual material, but for whatever reason, if you didn't want that, you could change that option to no so that you could not have different materials for different bodies. And the last option that we will take a look at, let's search on interference. This one is related to visualization. Here we have this new option, HLR, which stands for Hidden Line Removal, Advanced Interference Check for Parts. And what this means is the default value is yes, so it's going to do a better check, a more advanced check, a more accurate check on hidden lines for removal in a part when you are using that display mode. The thing about this option, as it notes in here, is that the default value results in slower performance. So you could turn off this advanced interference check for hidden line removal if you wanted better performance from your computer and updating on the computer screen. The last new thing to mention for now for multi-body modeling is a new option for exporting models. In a previous video I showed if you go to File Options and then Data Exchange, in your different import profiles, you have the ability to import multiple bodies in a part in your import profiles. But also, for your export profiles, you can choose whether or not you want to export construction geometry. If I go into my step export settings, here we have construction bodies are automatically set to be exported when you export a step file. But if you have those construction bodies that resulted in your part and you don't want those to be exported, you can control their export by turning off this option for construction bodies. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.